Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you, too. And they told me that I have to do a tribute in memory of Auntie Flo. And this funeral thing, I don't know. I, I, I don't really like them. But I understand that we've got to do them. So I was speaking to this lady, and she told me that she loves funerals. And I go, really? She said, yes. Even if I don't know who is dead, I still go. So I asked her why. She said, I go to hear what I call, this is my words, funeral stories. And the thing kept puzzling me. So recently, I was listening to a song out of Antigua. And it spoke about funerals and tributes and eulogies. It indicated how one can actually make a business and make a living from doing tributes and eulogies by performing, you know, making up stuff. I call them funeral stories. And I said, really? Well, my auntie Flo passed away and they told me I have to do this tribute. So here am I. So I said, okay, but I promise, this ain't no funeral story. <laughs> Auntie Flo and me was one of the greatest one-two punches that you'll ever see. <laughs> Even when she was sick. And no one else sometimes could get her attention. I would just supply my little magic. Walk with me, Auntie Flo. That was our secret code. Auntie Flo, like my, mo like my other aunts and uncles, cared deeply for everybody. And like one of my favorite uncles, at certain special happy times, he would say, I love my family. Auntie Flo loved her family. She loved everybody. Somewhere it is written, as a man liveth, so he dies. And Auntie Flo and Auntie Lou, my mother, lived leaving persons confused as to who was who. Every now and then, someone will approach me with some story. And they would reference my mother. And I would listen and begin to get confused because of the content. But I would listen keenly. And then I would say, oh, you mean my aunt? And then they would say, no, your mother. She ain't the lady with the shop over the bat who does sell the chicken. <laughs> and then would I, I would ask, well, how you know? She tell me so. <laughs> and then I would say, yeah, I didn't understand that that was what you mean, what you were saying. That was a confusion while they were alive. So Auntie Flo passed away on Saturday, October 21st. When I got into work on Monday the 23rd, Monday morning, the phone began ringing as soon as I signed on. I answered the phone and heard, good morning, Mr. Webber. This is a long-time family friend, and they call the name, but I won't mention it. You know me because I'm a family friend. 
but I now live in New York. I call to give you my condolence on the passing of your mother. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. But it was not my mother. It was my aunt. But so-and-so told me, and she keep going on and on. So I listen, and since I realized I, I couldn't convince her, I said, thank you, ma'am. Have a nice day. So just to be sure, tell me, could we just make sure? Finally, yes, <laughs> just check in. Finally, Auntie Flo was my Florence Nightingale. You all know who she was. Yes, she cared deeply. Because when Auntie Lou began getting her first bout with illness, it was Auntie Flo who was her Florence Nightingale. I remember just the other day, Uncle Boom Tumba and I were reflecting on the two of them when they became sick. And Uncle Boom Tumba said to me, Boy Webo, I remember sometime I just come off sea. And when I look, I see Mama close up her shop. Mine, customers come in, you know. And I would say, Mama, you know, see people are come to the shop. They got to wait till me come back. <laughs> me going go carry until the lunch. And that ain't no funeral story. Thank you, Auntie Flo.